All right, guys, today's short case study is a 2006 F-150 with the 5.4, and the customer's concern is a misfire that they're feeling at higher load with no check engine light and uh, no codes for the customer. So although this is a pretty common occurrence on this, on this platform, we're going to use this entire process and document it. That way you can carry this process over to other platforms that may be more difficult to diagnose. So I started by confirming that there were no codes in the system. In fact, there were none that were related to a misfire. So I took note of that. Next, I pulled up live data, and I'm looking for anything that points me in the direction of going down a funnel of diagnostics. So I want to go after fuel, spark, mechanical. So take note of a bunch of sensor information, inputs, outputs, CMP, CKP, synchronization looks good, at least by the data PID. Um, the throttle control was good. Uh, the fuel pressure was reading almost exactly where it needed to be at about 40 PSI. Um, it did note on a PID that there was a misfire around 79% load, which right in line with our customer's concern. Went through some of the EVAP information. I'm really looking for anything out of place, something that leads me in a weird direction. Uh, I looked at fuel trims, um, but I went ahead and went straight to raw O2 data. Now. There's some small anomalies on there, and you can see those are those weird lines are just when I was moving the PIDs around. So looking at this, our front O2s were oscillating like they should, but I noticed that our bank two oxygen sensor um, on the rear was letting me know that the cat was not absorbing oxygen like it's uh, like it normally would. Now we see bank one down there is stuck at about 0.69, sorry, not stuck. It's hanging around 0.69 volts. So it's absorbing oxygen, doing a pretty good job. But bank two still oscillates a little, so its its catalyst efficiency is quite degraded, probably due to our misfire. So let's go to power balance. This is going to give us a graphical output of cylinder contribution. So we see that cylinder five had a little mishap there. That's not uncommon, but it continued to be a regular low con contributor to the rest of cylinders. And, and that that continued on that way for a while. So I went to mode six data. I'm trying to keep this short for you guys. I know I don't have time for a 45 minute video during the day. But looking at mode six data, I was looking for evidence of misfires, most likely on cylinder five is what I assumed. Um, cylinder two had a single misfire occurrence and all the rest of the cylinders showed up nothing. Now. Tanner Brandt with Train by Tex also, he um, he made a great video on some mode six data, so I'll leave I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to view that one and uh, let him explain to you what mode six data is. So what do we do with this F-150? Do we take the most common, the uh, I didn't fix it route with throwing a set of coils and spark plugs at it. And it, I mean, it probably would fix it, but let's prove that the coils are the issue. Let's break out the Pico scope and let's take an amperage pattern of these coils. It's going to give us a lot of information. So let's start by looking at a wiring diagram. We're going to identify that the ignition coils are there and we see they're ground side switched. So all of the ignition coils are in a line there and they all seem to have a similar power feed. So looking at the power feed, we want to identify a location where we can acquire an amperage waveform. And here we see a fuse that feeds that V plus to all the ignition coils. But we don't want to use that. That feeds the ignition switch and these five other little arrows that feed off to other legs of the wiring diagram. So this signal would be pretty dirty, almost indistinguishable to find the coils in there most likely. So if we look at this track of wiring again, we're going to identify a location that will give us only the ignition coils. And we can see right here at this connector, we'll isolate, we'll be able to isolate just the ignition coils without digging through the wiring loom. This connector is directly in front of the PCM, so this is a good location to check for current at. Now we'll see that the wiring diagram shows a red with a green tracer. So we'll isolate that wire out and we'll take our amp clamp and put around that wire, notating the direction of current flow so we see amperage correctly on the scope. 
Then we'll take our second channel and we'll put it on the ground side of ignition coil number one. And this will give us an indication of where cylinder one's coil firing is so we can time what cylinder is what in our waveform. After we've booted up the PicoScope 6 automotive software, on the left hand side next to our blue channel, which is channel one, we'll select the drop down, then we'll select probe, and we'll select the current clamp we're using. Yours may not be this one, but if yours isn't on the list, you'll have to make a custom probe. Next, we'll change our amperage readout, which is, of course, a voltage input from the clamp. These coils normally operate from 6 to 8 amps, so I'll select 10 as our peak. Then I'll start the truck, and we'll start to acquire this multi-strike coil firing current. We'll see that it's multi-strike, so it's three strikes at idle, or anything under 1800 RPMs usually. Next, we'll take our channel 2 voltage and we'll up the scale until we can fit our pattern on there. There we go. And then from there, we'll go down to our trigger. And we'll select a repeat trigger, as we want this waveform to continually update. Then we're going to go and select channel B for our trigger, since channel B is where our ignition 1 current or voltage waveform is for channel one or for channel two on our cylinder one coil excuse me and then we're going to change our time base to about 20 milliseconds per division and at idle that's going to allow us to see almost all eight yeah all eight coils go on one screen here and then we notice that we have uh two of them that have higher peaks so we'll change the amperage scale and sure enough we've got two guys there right next to each other that have a really high amperage peak. Now, hopefully with all the evidence we have, um, most likely they're on bank two. So how do we figure these out? Which one's which? We know channel one is the red one, so the one below that's probably the current. Well, if we pull up a firing order for this vehicle, we'll see it's 137 26548. So if we plug in that firing order, starting at coil number one, we'll see that cylinders five and cylinders four both have a extremely high current peak compared to the others. So this is a pretty good indication that those two are our problem cylinders. So we don't have just a cylinder five misfired. We most likely have a cylinder five and cylinder four. Now this increased current peak is most likely due to uh, too long between spark plug intervals. This truck has 90,000 miles and it causes the degradation of the primary windings in those coils causing an increase of amperage. So, rather than loading up the parts cannon and firing eight coils and eight plugs at this thing, we called the customer with this F-150 and told them what we found. Now, this customer decided it was probably in their best interest to go ahead and replace all of the ignition coils and all of the spark plugs while we were there. It was due for plugs and it needed two coils. So after we completed the repair, we took a waveform again. So we can see here, we've looks like we've fixed this vehicle. Now, this was proof that it was broken and proof that it was fixed. See you next time, guys.